Hello everyone, I'm going to solve uh, this question from third homeworks, uh, homework set today. So the question is asking to calculate the equivalent resistance seen by this source. Now, to remind everyone what resistance is and how you calculate it, let's imagine that you're given a black box with two, two terminals coming off of it. And you're asked to calculate the equivalent resistance seen from these two terminals. So what you're, you need to do is to actually put your own source here. Now it doesn't matter if it's a voltage source or it's a current source. It's just a known source. And then uh, look at the current that is going in. So you're going to get a voltage, a known voltage of VT. Then you're going to get a current of IT. And then R equivalent by definition is equal to VT, the voltage developed across those two, divided by IT. That's the definition of resistance given that inside the black box there is no uh, other source of energy. So if there is any source of energy, you have to make sure that they're off before you proceed with this procedure. And this is a general rule for calculating resistance because basically this is coming from the definition of resistance this is how we defined what resistance is to begin with now in this question these two nodes are these two nodes right here why because it's saying calculate the resistance equivalent resistance seen from seen by the source and the source is connected to these two nodes Therefore, you're talking about these two nodes when you're calculating the resistance. Now, keep in mind, these two nodes are connected to a bunch of other nodes from top and the bottom. So you're basically calculating the voltage difference across these two general nodes divided by the current that is going into it, which is basically known and it's actually 0.2 amp. So all you really need to do is to calculate the voltage the difference across these two nodes and then divide it by 0.2 and that gives you the equivalent resistance. Uh, this is if you don't know any other shortcuts to calculate resistance using the techniques that we have already discussed uh, and what I'm talking about is uh, resistances in parallels, resistances in C's and all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to assume that we, we don't know any of those techniques. Go ahead and use it with our basic knowledge of uh, circuit analysis and the definition for resistance. Then go back and recalculate the same thing using our knowledge of those techniques as well. As well. So uh, let me quickly remove this definition. and move on to doing the analysis. Okay, so like always, uh, we're gonna start by labeling the nodes and the currents. So there's a node right here, and there's a node right there. Again, there are ways to do this much simpler. I'm assuming we don't know any, and we're just doing this hardcore. So I'm going to assume this is my ground. So zero volts right here. I'm going to call this V1, at which point once I calculate V1, that's basically the voltage difference across these two nodes. So let's not lose sight of what we are doing. I'm just trying to calculate the voltage difference across these two nodes so that then I divide it by the current that is going into it and get the resistance value. And since I uh, define this as zero, then the voltage difference is V1 minus zero, which is V1. So as soon as I have V1, I divide by 0.2 and I calculate the resistance. Okay, so there's a current here going down in this direction. I'm going to call that I1. There's a current going here. I2. There's a current going here. I3. And there's a current going there. I4. I'm going to do KCL in my head and uh, I know that this is therefore I4 because current in is equal to current out and this current obviously 
using the equation for this component is 0.2 amp. Now we're ready to move on to write all the equations. So there are three nodes. I can potentially write three KCLs. I don't have to write it for the ground because it has a known voltage value. Uh, I just assign zero volt to it. Uh, I, I don't have to do it for V2 because I already did it. So there's only one KCL for node V1 that I'm going to implement. So that's the currents going in is basically just 0.2 and the currents going out is everything else. So I1 plus I2 plus I3 plus I4 are the currents that are leaving that node and 0.2 is the current that is going in to that node. Now equations for components. I've already done the equation for this component by saying this current is 0.2 amp. That is the equation for that component. And uh, there are five other equations that I need to now write equations for components. For the 200 ohm, uh, let's start with the 600 ohm. For the 600 ohm, I1 is equal to V1 minus 0 divided by 600. For the 200 ohm, I2 equal to V1 minus 0 divided by 200. For the 300 ohm, I3 is equal to V1 minus 0 divided by 300. For the 250 ohm I4 is equal to V1 minus V2 divided by 250. And finally, for 150 ohm I4 is equal to V2 minus 0 divided by 150. Okay, at this point, one way to solve this is to go with the process of elimination. So I can equate these two by each other, get V1 as a function of V2, or V2 as a function of V1. Then I can put V2 as a function of V1 back into any of these two equations, one of the two, then take I1, I2, I3, and I4, which are now all a function of V1, and put them all back into KCL, I get one equation, with one unknown that is V1 and solve it. That's one way to do it. Um, I'm going to actually show you how you would do this if you wanted to use matrices, just as a practice of uh, showing you how this is done. So I explained to you that you're gonna move all the unknowns to one end of the uh, equations and then move knowns to the other end to prepare your set of equations for writing uh, the equation set in the matrix form. So the unknowns are all the circuit parameters, the circuit variables that you're trying to calculate. So I1, I2, I3, I4, V1 and V2 are your unknowns. Um, so for KCL, they're already on the left side, the unknowns, and your known value is on the right. And for these, we're gonna do the same. So this would be 600 I1 minus V1 is equal to zero. So 600 I1 minus V1 equal to zero is the same equation, but now I have all the unknowns on one end and known, which is a zero, in this case, in the other end. I'm gonna repeat that for uh, every other equation. So 200 I2 minus V1 is equal to zero. 300 I3 minus V1 equal to zero. Uh, 250 I4 minus V1 plus V2 is equal to zero. And finally, 150 I4 minus V2 is equal to zero. Now, uh, the number of unknowns, uh, three, four currents that are unknown and two voltages that are unknown. So six, total of six equations. Now your a total of six uh, unknowns. So your number of equations has to be equal to that. And you can clearly see that there are five equations for components and one KCL. So that's six. So this set of equations is 
uh, is, is basically solvable. Now, we're going to turn this into a matrix. Uh, the matrix of factors or multipliers is a six by six matrix. It gets multiplied by your vector of unknowns. That's, that's uh, six by one vector and it's equal to a six by one vector of knowns. So this is your a x equal to b. So now we're going to start filling up these. So your vector of unknowns is the first thing that you have to fill up uh, so that you know what the order is. So you, I1, I2, I3, I4, V1, and V2 is the order that I'm going to choose. You can actually put these in any order that you want as long as once you start putting the multipliers here, you just, uh, you're consistent with uh, this order. Okay, so there are six numbers, multipliers that I'm going to put here in every row, row uh, and they are the multipliers of uh, these unknowns for that specific equation that I'm trying to write. So start with KCL, multiply for I1 is 1, multiply for I2, 1, I3, 1, I4, 1, V1, 0, V2, 0. And that's equal to 0.2 on the other side. I'm going to repeat the same thing for all the other equations. Multiply for uh, I1 in the second equation, the first e e equation for components is 600, 0 for I2, 0 for I3, 0 for I4, then minus 1 for V1 and 0 for V2 on the other end is equal to 0. So repeat that, 0, 200, 0, 0, minus 1, 0, 0 on the other side. 0, 0, 300, 0, minus 1, 0, 0 on the other side. 0, 0, 0, 250, minus 1, plus 1, 0. Then finally for the sixth equation, 0, 0, 0, 150, 0, minus 1 is equal to 0. So this is my uh, matrix A multiplied by the unknown vector of X is equal to the known vector of B. So to calculate this vector, all I need to do is to take this matrix, inverse it, and then multiply it by this. And I get everything that I'm looking for, including V2. Uh, and I'm done. So this is one way of doing this. And usually a lot of calculators, if they don't directly do sets of equations for you, they do inverse of matrices. Uh, so you can punch in all these numbers in your calculator, calculate the inverse, and then multiply it by this, and you're done. For example, once you have the inverse, you take the first row of the inverse, and uh, the first basically all you need to do at that point because all the rest of these numbers are zero is to just get the first column multiplied by 0.2 each number and it gives you each of these unknowns um, and uh, that's about it okay so now uh, once I have v2 all I need to do in order to calculate the uh, v1 on v2 I mean once I have v1 all I need to do is to just say R equivalent is equal to uh, V1 that now I know what that is equal to 0.2 which is the current that is going into that node and I'm done okay so what if we knew these tricks that we've learned 
So I'm looking at these two nodes and I notice uh, that there are a bunch of these resistors. Let me actually clear out all the labeling because that way we can see the circuit more clearly. So since I am looking at this circuit and uh, from these two nodes, I should be able to use the techniques that uh, we discussed in terms of putting resistors in series and parallel and find an equivalent maybe faster using the equations. So you look at these two resistors and you notice that the, these two are obviously in series because the current that is passing through this one is the same as the current that is passing through 150 ohm to 250 and 150 because KCL of that node. So you can add them up 250 plus 150 uh, is 400. And then once you do that, then that 400 resistor ends up having the same voltage as the 300 because they're connected to the same two nodes. It's gonna have the same voltage as the 200. It's gonna have exactly the same two nodes. And it's the same as a 600. So all of these four resistors at that point are in parallel. And then you get one resistor that is connected to that source, which is your equivalent resistance. So another way of quickly calculating uh, the equivalent resistance would have been 600 ohm in parallel with 200 ohm, in parallel with 300 ohm, in parallel with 250 plus 150. Now what is that value? Well, you know how to calculate this basically when you put these in parallel. One over R equivalent is equal to one over 600 plus one over 200 plus one over 300 plus one over 400. Calculate that, inverse it, and you get our equivalent. Hopefully this has been helpful. Uh, thank you very much for your attention.